Hi all, my name is Vishnu Dutt and in this video we will continue our discussion on SD access control plane. As we have seen in data plane part one video, control plane information was used to complete the VXLAN packet, right? If you don't remember, please have a look at my old videos on SD access data plane part one and part two. This is important because we are trying to fill the missing field of VXLAN packet using Lisp or control plane. OK, consider this diagram. Do not worry about all these packets for now. These one, this one. Uh, OK, and we will fill the contents of these packet during these this video. OK, on left hand side of this diagram, we have two hosts. Host A, this one here and host B, this one. OK, these two hosts are part of the same network. We presume that host A and B have gotten its IP address from DHCP server. Don't worry, we will discuss how DHCP IP address assignment works in SD access environment in some other video. But for this video, let's assume host A gets IP address of 192.168.56.11/24 and host B gets IP address of 192.168.56.12/24. Switch one. This one, okay? Have complete information about host A that its MAC address is A colon A colon A and IP address is 192.168.56.11. This is a valid question that how switch one knows about this information. And the answer is that switch one keeps an eye on DSCP packets passing through it using DSCP snowbig feature and maintains this information. If my last statement doesn't make sense, then for now, assume switch one knows this information. Okay guys? This is the control plane node, this one, which is actually the brain of SD access fabric. On right hand side here, in this portion, we will see what actually happens inside this control plane node, okay? As a first step in SD access, endpoints or hosts register itself with control plane node. As soon as host A connects itself with switch one, switch one sends a register message to control plane node. So here is the register message from host A to control plane node, okay? This register message contains IP and corresponding MAC address of the host. Control plane node on receiving the register message starts updating its database here, this database, okay? This database consists of three tables, which are IP address to remote location or RLOC, MAC to remote location and address resolution table, right? One thing to note here is that remote location means the loopback IP address of switch one, which is 10.0.0.1. Let's fill this table. In first table, we will write 192.168.56.11 is the IP address and remote location is 10.0.0.1. Let's understand what is the meaning of this entry. This entry means that host A with IP address 192.168.56.11 is attached to a device with loopback 10.0.0.1, which in our case is switch one. Simple enough, guys. All right, let's fill the remaining table. In second table, we write MAC address A colon A colon A is present at location 10.0.0.1. Third table is address resolution table, which can be easily deduced from first two tables, right? In this table, we write IP address 192.168.56.11 has corresponding MAC address value, which is A colon A colon A. It is important to understand first row of this table and I believe it does make sense, right? Similarly, row two can be filled with host B contents. In this case, switch three will send out a map register message to control pane node. So in the first column, we will write IP address 192.168.56.12 is reachable over location 10.0.0.2. In second column, we write MAC address B colon B colon B is reachable over location 10.0.0.2. In third column, 
we write IP address 192.168.56.12 has MAC address value of B colon B colon B. So far, so good. Now let's discuss how these two hosts, which are in same network, communicates with each other in SDXs. Suppose host A initiates a ping packet towards host B. Here is the ping packet, this one, right? Let's fill it contents. The source IP address of this packet is 192.168.56.11 and destination IP address of 192.168.56.12, right? To send this packet over this wire or this ethernet media, this one, host A needs to complete the layer to frame or ethernet address also. Here is the layer to frame having source MAC address of A colon A colon A, okay? But it doesn't know the destination MAC address, correct? Hence, host A will save this incomplete packet in its memory and generates an ARP broadcast message. Let's write content of ARP message here on right hand side we have our message this one it consists of four fields which are sender ip sender mac target ip and target map let's fill all these values here sender ip will be 192.168.56.11 sender mac will be a colon a colon a Target IP will be 192.168.56.12 and target MAC will be all zero. Again, to send this ARP message over this wire, host A needs to complete the layer to frame. Let's write the content of layer to frame here. Here, right? Source address will be A colon A colon A and destination ad address will be the broadcast address, which will be all Fs, right? Switch one intercepts this ARP message from host A and contact the control plane node to ask MAC address of host B. This is done by sending map request message. Here is the map request message, right? Okay, let's continue. Control plane node consults its address resolution table, this one, and reply back to switch one with the MAC address of host B. Correct. It can reply because it already has this entry available, right? So far, so good. Let's see what happens next. Once switch one knows the MAC address of host B, it again consults with control plane node to know the location of host B with the help of map request message. Control plane node consults a database to fetch out the location of host B. This is available here, right? Control plane node sends the location of host B, which is 10.0.0.2, with the help of map reply message. After receiving this information, host A installs this information in its layer to forwarding table. Till this point, host A knows that host B with IP address 192.168.56.12 and MAC address B colon B colon B is present at location 10.0.0.2, which is the loopback address of switch three. Now, switch one will convert the ARP broadcast message to a directed unicast message. So here we have the ARP broadcast message. Switch one will replace the destination MAC address of all Fs to B colon B colon B colon B, okay? This ARP unicast packet is then encapsulated in VXLAN and UDP header, these two headers. We have already discussed contents of VXLAN and UDP header in our data plane videos, right? Now let's fill content of IP header. The source IP address of this encapsulated VXLAN packet is 10.0.0.1, which is the loopback address of this switch and destination address will be the location of host B, which is 10.0.0.2. Correct, guys? We have already advertised these location or loopback addresses in OSPF or ISIS routing protocol. Switch one knows how to reach location 10.0.0.2. So this VXLAN encapsulated IP packet will be forwarded over one of these interfaces these interfaces right again to send this encapsulated packet we need to write other ethernet header can anyone guess 
what will be source and destination MAC address for this Ethernet address? Yes, correct. The source MAC address will be the MAC address associated with this layer 3 interface of the switch. This one and the destination MAC address will be the MAC address of this interface or the next hop interface. And yes, you are correct. To know the MAC address of this interface, switch one again has to perform the ARP resolution. This is simple, correct? When switch three receives this VXLAN encapsulated IP packet, it decapsulates the ARP packet and forward it to host B. Switch three also installs this entry into its layer two forwarding table. That MAC address A colon A colon A is reachable at location 10.0.0.1 via loopback interface 10.0.0.2. Switch two, sorry, switch three installs this entry so that it doesn't need to query control plane. Correct, guys? When host 2 receives the unicast ARP request, it reply with unicast ARP reply. So here are the contents of ARP reply from host 2. So first of all, let's remove the old entries. Uh, let's remove this. Uh, let's remove this one and this one. Okay. Uh, let's fill ARP reply now. Sender IP will now become 192.168.56.12. Sender MAC will become B colon B colon B. Target IP will be 192.168.56.11. And target MAC will be A colon A colon A. This ARP reply packet will be intercepted by switch 3 and it knows the MAC address A colon A colon A is reachable via switch 1. Hence, it will encapsulate the packet in VXLAN header and forward it directly to switch 1. Switch 1 will receive the ARP reply packet and forwards it to the host A. Host A can now complete its ping packet which was stored in the memory. Right? This packet here. Correct? Now the packet is complete and further communication will happen in the, sa in the same manner that uh, that is this ping packet will be slapped with the VXLAN header and resulting IP packet will be forwarded towards switch uh, switch 3 loopback interface. Here I would like to explain the concept of layer 2 VNI field in VXLAN header. VNI is virtual network identifier. Whenever two hosts are communicating inside the same network in SD access, we write layer 2 VNI value in VXLAN header, which tells the destination switch to forward the layer to frame in correct VLAN. For example, suppose on switch 1, we have mapped VLAN 10 to VNI value 500, and on switch 3, we have the same mapping, which means VLAN 10 is mapped to VNI value of 500. So while creating VXLAN packet, we write layer 2 VNI value as 500. Okay. Here, uh, we write VNI value as 500 in this case. When this VXLAN packet reaches at switch 3, switch 3 knows that VNI value 500 is mapped to VLAN 10. Hence, it will forward the frame in VLAN 10. Simple, right? In this video, we have seen how to host in a same network communicates with each other in SD access. In next video, I will explain how two host communicates in SD access when they are not part of the same subnet. I hope you have enjoyed this video. See you in next one.